that's what it's all about. I'm Dickie Carr and I'm here today at King's Cross on the Regent's Canal. You just see me, I've just caught a cracking roach and I'm sure we're going to catch a few more. A little bit of luck, we may even catch a few bream, but for that fishing I think we've got to thank the British waterways. They've done a tremendous job on the canals. The towpaths are clean, the actual canal is in perfect condition and it, considering we're right in the middle of London, all the inner city canals at the moment are in tip-top condition. Just up there is St Pancras Station. And down to the right, we've got Camden Town. But I've chose to fish today in front of the post office building. I know from experience that this is a very good area and I'm confident that we're going to catch a few fish today. So let's go straight now and have a look at the tackle that we're going to be using today. We'll start off with a rod. Now the rod, I myself have been lucky enough to help to design with Leslie de Luton. As you can see it's a cork handle. Now I prefer cork handles, maybe because I'm old fashioned but I just like cork handles, I've always used them and they've never let me down. And the real fittings plastic fittings, just straightforward plastic fittings. In the winter I think much easier on the hands, don't get cold hands, beautiful. The rod himself, well as you can see it's a blue carbon, it's a module carbon blue, it's got very very fancy whipping, it doesn't make any difference to the rod but it does look nice and the rings, well it's got a nice big fousey ring to start with. Now I like Fuji rings, they definitely are the best rings you can get. They're an old established ring, so we're the first one, as you can see, is a pretty big one to enable the line to slip through nicely. And as we go up the rod further, you see we've still got the two legged rings right the way up, and then we come up to the top joint. As you see, a lovely soft action, really soft. That's a lot to do with the spliced in tip, but another major factor on that is the rings. As you look closer you can see there's only one leg on them. And being as a source of one leg it enables the rings to be a lot lighter and of course we can put them a lot closer. And with the rings being closer we get a lovely action. It doesn't affect the action on the rod at all. So I'm absolutely thrilled with them rings. The, as we go back to the beginning again I'll just pull the rod round and let you see the real action of it. As I would say, as my wife always tells me off for saying, I think it's absolutely magic. Now I've said that, I'll have to remember not to say that one again. But the rod, it's got fancy whippings, it's a fancy blue colour, and colour doesn't make any difference. It's 11 foot long, and it's nice and easy to handle. It casts the float out nice, and I know a lot of people have 12 foot rods, 13 foot rods, but for canals, I like an 11 foot. Today, as you can see, where I'm fishing, it's a little bit wider, but when we go up to the Midland canals and some of the local canals near, near around Luton and around where I live, the canals may only be 12 metres wide. Then you need a shorter rod, an 11 foot rod comes into its own. Now we come to the reel. The reel I'm using is a Shimano Hera Match. It's probably the most expensive match reel on the market. But again, I believe you only get what you pay for. If you buy the best, you get the best. And quite honestly, in the end, it does work out cheaper because it lasts you longer. As you can see, the clutch is right on the back here. Myself, I just tighten it up as tight as I can and completely forget about it because I like to play me fish with the handle, I like to back wind, and this is where a nice smooth reel comes into his own. And this reel is smooth, but why? Well, they tell me inside we've got all these special ball bearings and that, but I'm not at all mechanical minded, and I just, to be honest, I don't understand it at all. All I know is it works well, and that's the important thing. So 
Let's get on to some other features about the reel that make it a good reel. The spool for a start. As you can see, it's a very wide spool. They tell me that the line goes on again in some special way. All I know is that it comes off nice and easy when you cast, and to me, that's the important thing, and that's what matters. So, no more said about that. The other things about the spool, most of the spools, you have to put backing on, but with this one, you don't. All I've got on there, because it's a lovely shallow spool, is 200 yards of 1.7 line, and as you can see, it's right to the top. So that saves me a little bit of work in putting the backing on and getting everything right, which I normally find, to get everything just right, a bit awkward. The other useful thing is the top of the spool is so smooth, there's absolutely nowhere at all where the line can get caught and cause any tangles or any interference while fishing. So that's another plus. The bow arm. As you can see, if I hold it, it's a very short distance. So even with my little fingers, I can hold the bow arm. And if I happen to strike and a good fish runs off, all I need to do is just ease my finger away and let the reel run out nice and smooth. And then just re-finger when it decides it's slowing down and then I've got perfect control. The one other thing is the little weenie handle. I like a small handle, it doesn't get in the way. So this has got a lovely little handle. So really, that's all I can say about the reel. To me, brilliant. No complaints whatsoever. So now we come to the line. Well, lines. There's so many lines on the market that everybody's got their own favourite line. Myself, I've always used Bayer. Ever since I was a youngster, I can't remember how long ago that was, but I've got a lot of confidence in Bayer. It's never let me down, so there's no point or no reason whatsoever to change. But let's talk about it for a little while. Myself, I always treat me lines, but that's a little thing that we'll talk about later on, how I treat them. But Bayer, 1.7 Bayer Perlung, as I said I use. It's a good sinking line. It's always an even diameter. It's a soft line. And everything you could want really in a line you've got. So, as I said, I've got a lot of confidence in it and confidence makes a good angler. So, I'm happy. But if we go further down the line, let's have a look at the float. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try to make sure I don't go and let the hook drop into the net or anything. <laughs> That's the last thing I wanna do. So let's try and put the hook completely out of the way so it doesn't get tangled anywhere and come down to the float. Right, the float. As you can see, I'm using one that I made myself and I've tried to camouflage it a little bit. But the boot perfectly honest, just rotten painting, but it looks nice anyway. Well, I think it does. But before we look at the float, we'll look at the adapter. Now, a float adapter, a small little item of tackle, only cost a few pence, but I think myself, when you're float fishing, a float adapter is one of the most useful little bits of equipment you can buy. If I just take the float off quick, and if I want to, I can change. Just through that and just slip another one back on. A little thing I always do, just a little tip, just put it in your mouth, wet it, see how much easier the adapter slides on. So easy, a real useful little bit of equipment. But the float, this one that I'm using today is a 2AA Peacock Waggler. I love Peacock. Again, it's, it's it's the most reliable of all the floats. Over the years, I would say Peacock has been used more than any other material for making floats. Going back when I was a youngster, I can even remember, I used to go up the zoo, and I was always round the Peacock Avery, trying to see if I could pull a bit of Peacock or get hold of a bit of extra Peacock. Because, and that's going back a long time, I can tell you. But, and I've just got a very small insert, a thick insert. This one, I've put this float on today because I do intend to drag along the bottom, to drag over depth, so of course I want a thick insert. And 
So really, basically, that is that float, just a thick insert, all peacock. Now, on different conditions, you need different floats. So just let's have a, a quick look at two or three other floats that are you liable to need on a canal. Well, we start off first with my favourite, this one here. As you can see, that's well made, but I've got to admit, I never made this one. I scrounged it. Well, when I say scrounged it, I scrounged it off Ray Mills, but over the years, I've given him so much blood and joker, I think he felt a bit guilty and made me a few floats, but I do love this float. It works well, and the top, it, it does look nice as well, but let me just tell you, it's peacock, Nice peacock stem which takes two AAs and it's inserted with a cocktail stick. Now the cocktail stick is reversed so you've got the thin end going into the float and the thicker end at the top which again this is lovely for fishing on the drop. You can see your fishes on your bites on the drop and also you can see your lift bites. So you can see the lovely lifts on them so really it's one of my favourite floats. It's to be honest, it's the sort of float that if you lose, you jump in for it. You break me heart if I lost that one. So let's put it away. Let's put it safely so the wind don't catch it. And now we come on to this one. It's a similar float. It's the Crystal Drennan Crystal Float. It does much the same job as the other one, but as you can see, it's crystal. So in clear water, I love to use these floats. I think they work very well and of course the fish can't see them. So I'm not going to say too much about this float because it speaks for itself and it acts a lot similar to the one I just put down, but very good in clear water. So now let's go on to the shotting patterns. And with, here we are. I'm going to start off with the AAs that I've got locking the float. Now, if you look very closely, you can see that I've got two pieces of silicon rubber that I threaded onto the line and locked the shots on. Now, there's two major advantages, I'll show you them. Number one, when you want to alter the depth. Look at that, that's lovely, isn't it? You can move the shot so easily, it does make life a lot easier. It has got to be better than having to loosen them with your fingernails or your teeth and moving up and down, so that is a plus. Now, the other advantage of this, of course, is when you cast. You get the odd occasion when we get a bad headwind and we really have to whack the float out. And sometimes when you whack the float out, the shots come apart and the float wobbles, which honestly is, is no good for casting. So, but for some reason, when you've got this silicon, it never happens. So that is a plus. Now, the other thing is, I will mention while I'm here, there's a new non-toxic lead out called anchor and where before we used to have bb's aa's and swan shots now we've got a size that's in between an aa and a bb and an aa and a swan so that's got to be an added plus that's the double cut one it's very good it's very handy as i myself i only like to have two shots locking a float because i think it's neater but that's enough for that Right, now let's have a look at the shotting pattern down the line. Let's make sure we don't tangle this lot up. There we are. Right, well, I've got a straightforward, simple shotting pattern. All I've got down the line is three number 11 shots, and I've got them spaced evenly. Now, that is a straightforward, simple pattern, and quite honestly, I think, myself, it's impossible to tangle using this shotting pattern. No matter how you cast, it just never seems to tangle, so that has got to be a plus. Now the only time I will alter that shotting pattern is if I want to drag along the bottom for bream and make the bait more stable. And by doing that, all you need to do then is just alter this bottom shot down a few inches and then pull this other number 11 down next to the other one. But there's one other important little trick, again, it's all to make sure you don't get any tangles, is to hold the bottom shot, and when you hold the bottom shot, get the hook and push the hook, and if you look there, the hook is just a little bit shorter than the bulk shot. Now, 
being like that, that makes it less chance of tangling. I'm not going to say it's completely tangle proof, but there's less chance of tangling. So that's a useful little tip to remember with any float you're using. Right, now we've come from the shotting pattern, let's go to the hook length, the line we're going to use, and the hook, which to my way of thinking is very important. So let's have a look. The line I'm using, just for a second, I'll just hook the hook back on the rod, out the way, and I'll show you the line that I use. I've got some here, Andy. Now the line I'm using is a Nesty Special. I've been using this line for quite a while now, and the one big advantage of this, when we can find it, when we can find the end of it, come off. That's the, the old damp weather today has made the line stick. Ah, oh, here we come, we've got it here. We've got the line off. Now, I think myself, I've mentioned today all about soft rod and striking into the fish and not breaking off. But now and again, I think you need a hook length with a lot of stretching. Now, if I hold this line, see the extra stretch. The stretch in that line is incredible. And that's what you want. So that if you cast out, your float slides away and you strike into the fish, just as the fish is running away from you, if you've not got a little bit of give in the line, boom, you lose a fish. And to someone like myself, it could mean losing a match. But let's be fair, no matter whether we're out pleasure fishing, fishing a match, we never want to lose a fish. We never feel, think we don't want to leave an hook in the mouth. So a line with a little bit of stretch is an advantage. This line here is 06. Now, I can remember a little while back, a few years back, lines used to come in 10 ounces, 12 ounces, one pound one and one seven. But now, most of the lines, especially these foreign lines, come in diameters. Now this is an 06, and it's, it's the same thickness as the 12 ounce line, which breaks, I think it breaks at about a pound. So I'm very impressed with that line. I've been using it quite a while now, and it's not let me down. So now let's have a look at the hook. Now the hook I use, it's another thing that you've got to have confidence in. I've got some just did under here. Here we come. Is an Anesti hook again. You'll, you'll say I'm Anesti mad, but I've got great confidence in. Now they're the hooks, uh, what are they called? They're Series A. Now, a couple of advantages about these hooks. They've got a micro barb, which is something that I like to have, just a micro barb. A very sharp hook that doesn't go blunt very often, but the biggest plus is it's got a very, very small spade on the hook. And if you've got a small spade, there's less chance of it cutting the line, and of course it keeps the weight of the hook down, so that's the hook I've been using. Before I start on the bait, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of my roach attractors on the end. Now, the reason I do this, is really, let's rub it in well, it's really because if you put petrol in your car, you smoke, I don't smoke myself, but you smoke, or you get rid of anything to do, any human smells, and I feel happy. I've always done it, it gives me more confidence, but that's that done, let's get down to the bait. Now, I'm going to start with casters, simply because casters is my favourite bait. I think we've all got a bait we, we enjoy using more than others and we like using, and casters is mine. I've got two pots of casters here. One, as you can see, is dark, and the others are a lot, a lot brighter. Now, both of these cast, lots of casters came off the same run, but the only difference being one of them I left out in the open for a lot longer without putting in a box with the polythene and the lid on to so say it got really dark. Now those casters, the dark ones, are what we call stand on your head. When you put them in the bucket with the water in it, they stand on their heads. And the reason for that being, I think that they sink a lot slower. And roach or bream, whatever you're after, they don't necessarily swim on the bottom. They swim any depth from six inches off bottom to a foot from the top. 
And as they swim along, they see the bait falling slowly and they intend to follow it down. Now, as I said, I like to feed casts normally anything from four to six at a time and I normally pick out three of those and three of those. And as I said, the ones that stand on their head just sink that little bit slower and the fish are more liable to see that, follow them down and start to feed. And the ones that are already laying on the bottom that you've been firing out gradually, the ones that stand on their heads, come up and down like that with the swell of the fish. So that's got to be an advantage. Other baits I've got is red maggot. Now red maggots, red baits for some reason, fish just seem to like red baits. As I've said, casters are red, maggots are red, worms are red, and red is the in bait. I mean, we've even now, we've got red squats. So we've looked at the maggots. Let's have a look at the other baits we've got. We've got the red squats. Again, I've had to put the lid on all my baits because it's, as you see, it's a rotten old rain at the moment and the baits are liable to, to crawl out if we don't put the lids on. So we've got the squats and we've got pinkies. We've got red pinkies, we've got white pinkies, you have bronze pinkies, and you have what we call a rosamine pinky. Now, probably rosamine pinkies are the most used colour bait, colour pinky of the lot. I can even remember, oh, going back about 15 years when I started match fishing, Ivan Marks. Now, he said to me, we couldn't buy rosamine pinkies in those days down in, in London. And Ivan, I was on a very important match, and I can remember one Friday night, I drove up to Ivan Mark's house in Leicester just to get some of these rosamine pinkies. And a few times a day, I've mentioned confidence. And having this bait, being told it was so good, I happened to win the match. And that's what it's all about, confidence. So rosamine pinkies are definitely one of the in baits at the moment, a bait that everybody likes to use, especially on canals. Um, we mentioned all the baits, now let's have a look at the ground bait we're going to use today. Right, the ground bait I'm using, I've already mixed it up, and in here I've got Super Cup and Special. Now Super Cup and Special, I think myself, without any doubt, is, is the in-ground bait on the canal. It mixes absolutely perfect, and quite honestly, um, Super Cup and Special go together like bread and cheese. They, they, they just go perfect together. But what you've got to remember is, I've already put some pinkies and some squats in here. So before you decide to throw it in, give it a mix. Give it a, a nice mix round with your hand because the old pinkies and the squats tend to go to the bottom of the bowl. Now, if you get hold of the ground bait, if you can squeeze it into a nice bowl, if your ground bait's mixed up right, you should just better go like that and it all breaks up. That tells you the ground bait's perfect. But always give it a good old mix up before you, before you decide to get a, a ball in your hand and um, squeeze it. And if I throw it in the edge, you can see what a lovely cloud we get off this ground bait. Just, just enough to hold it together. Just pop it into the edge. Look at that, that's a lovely cloud. See, it's just breaking, that's perfect. How can the old fish say no to that? But that's enough said about baits. Let's get down now to the real business of catching some fish. First things first, let's plumb the depth. Now for plumbing the depth, I don't use a big um, plummet. I prefer to use an AA shot. Just pinch that on next to the hook and out we go. Look at that, it's just wrapped around the top eye. Just give it a quick couple of twists, make sure it's all okay. Ah, I think that just seems a little bit too deep. Just come it in. In we come. If we take a bit off, now you see where the old silicon rubber comes in handy. See how easy that was? Just took four inches off it, as easy as that. Out we go again. Just untwist it again, that must be 
just fetching it down, that's better. Out we go. Let that settle. Look at that, absolutely perfect. Ideal. In we come. Off with the shot. Right, just one more thing before we get fishing. Let's make sure, we've got to make sure we sink the line well on canal. so a little trick here. I'll just lay the rod down a second. My rod rest. As you can see, I've got a piece of sponge which I've tied to the fork of the rod rest, and all I do, washing up liquid. I try not to touch it with my hands, the actual liquid, just keep it off the water. Just a little bit of washing up liquid on top of the sponge. Put that away safely. Put the rod rest in. Now that's ready there. That will keep the line so that it sinks all the time without no problems. Right, we're ready to do some fishing now. Right, out we go. Right, out we go. I must tell you, I've got no bait on here, but just let me show you. What I intend to do now, as we've got the washing up liquid on, I've laid a rod onto the washing up liquid on the sponge, and I'll reel in gently. Just a nice little gentle wind in. No rush about it. And what I'm doing now, I'm making sure this line's going to sink. This line will sink like a stone now because it's got a nice coating of washing up liquid on it. And then just nice and gently reel in, fill the float to the top. Right, that's all everything's ready now. We can at last, we can actually get down to the real business of catching some fish. Right, we're going to put a red maggot on to start with. Just a single red maggot. Now I intend to fish it today. We'll just throw out and I'll tell you while we get everything underway. Bury the line. I'm just going to fish the middle to start with. So I intend to do, I can fish the middle with ground bait with a few squats in it and red maggot on the hook. And all the time I'm going to be firing a few casters three quarters of the way across with the hope of picking up some better fish as the day goes on. We'll put the ground bait in first. One thing, give it a good old mix. Make sure we get the squats that have gone down to the bottom and the pinkies. Just a little ball. And out we go. Oh, lovely. Perfect. Right on top of the float, that was. And just a few casters now. Three out of there. Three out of there. Lovely. Right, let's get down. I don't know how long we're going to have to wait for a bite today, but with a little piece of, a bit of luck, it shouldn't be too long. Or nudge. It's not too far out with fishing. I reckon we can just about reach that too with just a few loose feed squats as well. So just try a few loose feed squats. Not too many, just a few, just to try and get the smaller roach interested. Another little movement, just pull the float back gently and you get another drop through again. Oh, oh, missed that one. <laughs> That's definitely a bite, just pull the float back a bit. Let's see if the maggot's marked. Yeah, must have been a little roach, just, just the end of it, just the end of it is nipped. Let's try another one. I'd just like to 
to put the, the, the hook just through the skin, in between the two eyes, just so that you've got plenty of wiggle in the maggot. Do a nice little sideways cast. Right down. Now what I intend to do, I bury it. I've not pulled it back so far as last time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get myself a little piece of ground bait. Just squeeze it, not too hard. Like Fire it out. With a bit of luck, it should just go about a yard short of the float. Perfect. Now, I'm going to pull it back a little bit more. Now that's right in the middle of the cloud now. That should get a bite if, if it goes to plan. Oh, that's it. There's a fish. There we come. Oh, a little roach. Looks like. Yeah, a little roach. Swing that one to end. And look it. In the keep net. Right, I'm going to show you the sideways cast now. Just put a maggot on. Right. The sideways cast is a useful on the canals because we don't have to worry about any other canal users. You don't take the bait at all back or the rod behind you, so it's a lot safer on canals. Hold the line, let the maggot dangle a couple of three inches below your ends, and then we go just a nice gentle little side swing. Nice and gently does it. Bury the line, and there we are. Nice and easy. We reel in slowly. I never reel in fast when, I, when I've not got a fish or nothing on. If you reel in nice and steady, you never find, you never get the line kink up where the maggot spins or nothing. So just reel in nice and easy all the time. The next cast is the overhead cast, which on canals, if you're going to use the overhead cast, have a quick look one way, quick look the other way, Make sure there's nobody about. Always try and think of people walking behind you, going by on bikes. That's it, nice and gently does it. Again, it's nice and smooth. Okay. Bury your line, you're ready for fishing. Again, we reel in, nice and gently. No rush at all. In we come. Right. Here we are, everything's okay. Old debate, we'll do a sideways cast, see if we can catch another fish. Nice and gently does it. Here we go. Bury the line. Right. There we are. Right, we just we just put another little ball of ground bait in. Remember what I said earlier? A good old mix round. I see old squats and pinkies do intend to go down to the bottom of the bowl. Just a little ball of cloud. There we go. Just drop it short of the flow. Lovely. Look at that. Just an out. Couple. Back again. Right into the cloud now. The float is. Let's see if we can catch another bite. While that's settling, mustn't forget, you must always feed. Just a few casters a bit further out now. Two or three of them. Two or three from there. I'm hoping in a little while to put a caster on, and we never know, we might go over there and get a bigger fish. There was. Just give it a little gentle nudge. Oh, that was a that was a bite. Ah, there we are. Feels like a roach. I'll take my time with it because I don't want to lose it. There's nothing worse. If you lose a fish, it sometimes it intends to go back through the swim and um, frighten the others. We will net. It's not very big, but we're, we're play safe. We don't want to lose it. Just stick the net under it. Doesn't take a second. Right. It's only a little roach, but well worth netting. The hook caught in the net. Right, there we come. Put the net out of the way. Ready for next time. 
we are, put the hook down. We are, a nice little roach. We'll put that back. We'll come out again. We have one more cast with a red maggot on the ground bait line. Then I think we'll have a go, see if we can catch a few better fish. A bit further out, we have been feeding a few casters. We'll put another red maggot on. I'm going to have one more chuck with a red maggot. And then we're going to see if we can get some better fish on the further line. A nice little sideways chuck. Now because I'm intending to, to go on the casters, we'll feed a few more first. Just two or three of each. One of the important things to remember is little and often. Little and often. Keep the bait falling, not too many at a time, just little and often. Just a little bit of ground bait again. Again, go down to the bottom. Just a little ball. Oh, well. Out we go. Look at that. I was just gonna I was just gonna nudge it and it went away. Ah, now this does feel like a better fish. I'm not going to say it, but I'm hoping it could be a bream. It, it feels like it. Oh dear, take your time with this one. The last thing you want to do is to lose one. If you lose one, you can spook the old shoal. Come on, take your time here. Now look, have you noticed, see that I'm back winding, the fish is running. See how nice and easy? That's it. Just take me time, no rush. I'm just sitting here enjoying every minute of this. Lovely. Is it a bream? There it is, yeah, it's a bream, lovely. It's, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, it's a lovely bream. Over, come, there we go. Gently does it, oh, there we go. I'll lay the rod on the rest for this one. <laughs> lovely. Do you know, that's funny, I was just thinking of going on to the caster, that's really made me mind up now. Let's put it off. Turn the fish round, we don't want to hurt it. Take the hook out. Get it out of the way. Look at that. That's a lovely fish, that one. That's got to be about a pound, I reckon. Beautiful. Gently in the net. Lovely. Right. Go on, dear, I'm keen now. Let's get the caster on. Let's get the caster on. There we are. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bury a caster right in the hook out of the way. We have one of these. I'm taking one of these casters that we said stand on their head because that will counteract the weight of the hook. And that will make it act more naturally when we're on the bomb. There we go. Wow. Lovely. Let's get out there again. A little bit further this time. A little sideways cast. Out we go. Lovely. Lovely. Let's bury the line. Buried the line, that's perfect. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm not going to bother with any more ground bait in the middle. I'm just going to concentrate loose feeding casters. There we go. I don't know, it's nice. I think it's just started to run a little bit. I reckon there must be a, a few boats, a boat coming along or something, because it's just started to run. But that's, that's dragging through perfect at the moment. There we go, it looks like it's... Oh, beautiful. I think we've got another one. Does it feel like another bream? Really does, lovely. Right, here we come. I think it's a bream, feels like a bream. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. It's what we call a caster fish, it really is. Always a little bit bigger than the others. Here we come up, we come. No, no, it's, it's a good roach. Oh, it's a beauty. It's probably about 12 ounces by the looks of things. Whoops, come here. Come to Dicky. come on. In we come. Take me time with it. I'm not going to lose this one. Look at that, that's a beauty. That's it. Lovely. Put that down. Oh, it's a beautiful roach. Not quite 
probably about 10 ounces. I was exaggerating a bit, 12 ounces. Put the net out of the way. Look at that. I think myself, if you were asked most anglers what their favourite fish are, a lot of people would say roach. Look at that, that's a beautiful fish. Lovely condition, beautiful. What we call a proper caster roach, beautiful. In we go, nice and gently in the net. Definitely another caster on the hook now. Let's thread another one out of here. As we go. All the way on, out we go again. Let's go, right, same place with a bit of luck, beautiful. Bury the line. That's sitting there lovely. And mustn't forget, always keep feeding, little and often. Go. Just a few, seven casters. If the fish really started to feed, and then of course I'd, I'd put a lot more bait in, but at the moment we're just going to go steady because the fish are feeding really confident at the moment. In again, yeah, this does feel like a good fish, this one. Oh, see how I'm back winding? Yeah. Oh, I've just seen it. It is a bream this time. It's a beauty. Let's just take me time with it again. No rush. We've got all day. I don't want to lose it. Let's put my hand on the top of the bow line. If it does make a sudden run, I can just take my finger off and let it go. See, like that, it just went to go down. It's a lovely fish. Look at that lovely action on the rod, eh? Oh, dear. It's starting to rain really hard now, but when you're catching fish like this, the last thing you worry about is the weather. Oh, there she comes. Look at that. That's a beauty. That's the biggest one up to... Oh, don't lose it now. That's the biggest one today yet. I've got a feeling there's a few out there now. There's a few feeding fish out there. Let's get it in. Oh, dear, look at that. That must be a pound and a half. That'll be a pound and a half, that one. Come here, take the hook out gently. I don't want to damage it. Oh, it's really hooked in the hard piece of the mouth, that one. Only a little hook, so I've got to be careful. There we go. Look at that, that's a beauty. Biggest fish today, that one. What a beautiful fish, eh? Got to be a pound and a half. Really pleased with that one. Well, it's at least it stopped raining, that's one good thing. I've been a fair while now without a bite. I think it's sunny to do because it's definitely running a little bit harder now. It really is running hard and well it's a good time now without a bite. We'll give, give it a little while long. If I don't catch I'm gonna definitely come in and go on the bomb. Just Yeah, it is it is it is really pulling through now. That's it. Let's let's have a go on the bomb. I've had, I've had a few fish on the waggler, quite a few. Let's see if we can catch a few on the bomb. Come here. Put the hook in there safely out of the way. And put the clutch on, lay that down safely. Right, me bomb. Me bomb rod I'm using today is a little bit longer than I would normally use on the canal, but as you can see, it's slightly wider here than in other places. We've been catching bream, so we're going to catch bigger fish. So I've used a longer rod. The tip, although the, the rod is carbon, the tip is, is fiberglass, which is so soft, I will see every bite on the, on the rod at all. The, the reel is another Samano. Another smooth reel, expensive reel again, but very smooth and it's nice on the back wine like, like I was explaining on the waggler rod. The line I've got on is two pound and it's Maxima. It's another line that sinks very well and it's, it's been coated well with washing up liquid so I have no problems at all with sinking the line. Now we come down to the business end very simple. All I've got is a straight pattern off the rig. If I hold it in my hand like that, you can see. Probably eight or nine inches with a bomb. 
So it's just a straight mm, pattern oster. The hook length, it's only just about two foot six. No need to go any longer because, well, we've only got three and a half to four foot of water. So keep it nice and easy, nice and simple. Let's get out and see if we can catch a fish. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to put a single caster on. That's it, single caster. I haven't said it yet, told you before, but you can see I've got me, me rod holder laying just out a little bit from the bank and that acts as a perfect rod rest. That should just be in the right position to take the tip about six inches off the water. Just a nice little gentle sideways cast. Lovely. As soon as it goes down, just put the tip under the water, let the line come off gently and then just pull it. I like to move the bomb about six inches and that straightens the pattern oster out so that I can see every bite. There we are. I just put the clutch on and as soon as I hook a fish, I'll take it off. As you can see, the tip's about just a few inches from the water. If I just give the line a pull, I'll just show you how soft that tip is. Look at that. You can't miss but see every bite on that. Just while that's settling, I'm just going to fire just a few casters over. Three from there, three from there. There they go. Oh, that's amazing. I feel so much better now that rain stopped. There we go. Look at that. It's not been out there long at all. That's a bite straight away. It's a nice fish. It's just shot into the edge now. It's just shot into the bank there. Now it's going out again. There it is. Oh, it's a roach. Oh, that's a lovely cast of roach. Under you go. There we are. Lay the rod down. That's a beauty. That really is a lovely fish, that one. Oh, look at that. Let's put the net safely out of the way. That really is a beauty. That's got to be every bit of eight ounces. Oh, what a lovely fish. Eh? Put it in gently. Being as I've caught a roach that time, I'm going to put double caster on this time. Let's put two on. One, two. Right, let's have another go out there. One of the things you have to remember myself, especially, because when I cast out, when I, when I was playing that fish, I took the clutch, I took the clutch off. So I've got to remember to put the clutch back on, just in case I strike and the line comes out. Out we go again. Lovely. Just draw that back. Let the line go out. Last six inches. I just straightened the bomb up and the line. Here we go. Mustn't forget, little and often, just a few from there and a few from there. I'll probably put, I'll probably put more than usual in, probably 10 casters that time, a little bit more, but there seems to be a few bream about. I, I, I had a little knock then, look at that. I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it take because I've got double cast. Look at that, look, 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 oh, there we go. Oh, lovely, lovely. I would say this one's a bream. It's definitely a good fish. Oh, look at that, making me back wind. Eh, come on. Come on, my beauty. That is a good fish. Oh, come on, let it go. Come on. Just a nice, oh, a nice little gentle pump. It Pull it up, pull the rod up, as the fish comes up, and as I go down, I wind. That's, that's it. Up. Now, I wind a little bit as I go down. That's it. There it goes. There it comes. Oh, it is a bream. I expect I'll get some comments on the size of my net. Oop, it don't want to come yet. But a big net like this, is, it's always handy because you never know when you're going to get a real big fish, and I always say it's safe to have a big net. You never know when you might get a carp. Look at this, this is beautiful. Oh dear. 
Look at that. Got to be two pound, that one. What a lovely fish. God dear me. Lovely, eh? In she goes. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a real brave man. I'm going to put a worm and a caster on. I've got some little red worms here. Put that on top there. One worm. Now what I like to do, when I put a worm on, I like to put a caster on the end of it because it stops the worm from wriggling off. And I've got a little weeny barb on the hook. The caster just stops it from coming off the hook. So let's get out there again. Remember to put the bow arm, the clutch back on, and out we go. There you go. Lovely. Lower the rod down. The line sunk. Let me end off the line, the last six inches, just reel it to straighten out everything. Lay the rod down and let the tip go so there's no tension on it, because you, you don't want any tension on the tip at all. Because if it feels too much tension, the fish, it's just as liable to let it go pretty quick. Look at that, eh? look at that. This. I think that was a fish nudging the line. Just, just look, see, just nudged it did then. I've got to remember, when you get these fish nudging the line, there's a lot of fish in the swim, and I've got to remember what old Ivan told me. He always says, as Ivan marks, our, our southerners are so impatient, we're so keen, we hit every movement. Oh, look, look. That's going to go. It's, I'm going to let it go, because I've got a worm on, so I'm going to let it take it well. I'm not, I'm not going to hit them little movements. Oh, I think that's... Oh, that's it. There we come. That's another one. I should imagine it's another bream, it feels like it. What I was saying about Ivan, I thought I'd lost it for a moment. You must sit on your hands, he says, because we strike too quick. He swears that we strike the fish miles too quick, us southerners. Sit on our hands, let the fish really get the bait, especially when you're fishing worm. I haven't seen it yet. Ah, there it is, it's a bream. So, remember when you're bream fishing, don't strike too quick at all. Let the fish really take it. There we are. That's another nice bream. Oh, I can see the worm spat up the line. It's there we are. Lovely. Let's have a look at this one. Look at that. What a lovely fish. Damn it. Look at that. See, it's got the worm. It's pushed the worm off the hook. It has up the line slightly. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Let's put that there. Well, I can hear, I put that on there, out of the way. Well, I can hear the hum of the traffic. So that means it's getting near going home time for me. I've had a fantastic day's sport. I've had bream, I've had roach. I've even had the odd perch. And when you consider we're right in the middle of London, not far from King's Cross Station, and we've got fishing like this, I can honestly say today I've caught more fish than I have at days when I've been in Ireland. That's how good it is here. So let's, let's have a look at what we've caught today. Just, just move my seat over out of the way. Let's have a look what we've caught. God, there's a few, few there. There must be, there must be 12 or 14 pound there. Let's put them back gently. We won't, no, we don't want to damage them. They give us so much pleasure today. Look at that. Everything there. Go on, off you go, my beauties. Go on, away you go. Away you go. Go on. Go on. Lovely. Lovely. Well, we've caught a few fish on the waggler, and we've gone on to the bomb, and we've even caught some on the bomb. I'm sure we could have caught more, but the light's closing in, so I'm going to call it a day now. 
if any of you see me on the bank, just come up and say hello to me. Well, Tom, a couple of years ago, we wouldn't have been standing on the side of the canal in London talking like we are today. That's very true, David. Uh, we've made a lot of progress over the last couple of years. I'm delighted, obviously, that we've got an inner city canal such as this, actually producing fish. Mm. That can't be bad, you know. Well, I've been very impressed. Um, as you know, I feel very seriously about the opportunities that your, your inner city canals present for younger people, because it's on their doorstep. And if we could get them on the canals fishing, then it means they're probably not on the street creating problems. Oh, well, that's absolutely it. I mean, that's what it's all about. Putting bums on seats, if you don't mind me saying. We're using that expression. Well, nicely put. <laughs> but, you know, on the canal bank, yeah. getting the kids off the streets, onto the canals fishing, mm. and disabled, mm. and anglers in general. Uh, you know, the more anglers I can see on our canals, the better, so far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I like to think that's because of the, the new working relationship we've got, Tom, in in that um, over the last couple of years, with a lot of hard work, we've hammered out a very good agreement for the anglers, giving them protection, and not only protection of their fisheries, but long-term protection, which is a thing that we didn't have before. Well, that's true, Dave, and you know as well as I do that uh, there's been a wind of change, if you like. The NFA have done a good job for anglers in discussions with the BWB. Uh, you have a good agreement, as you say, but not only that, we're working on a lot of other things that are of interest and involvement for anglers. Mm. It's got to be good all the way around. Yeah, I think it's, it's what I like is the new professional approach. Yes, I agree with you. I mean, it's been give and take over the past couple of years and what's come out of it has been good. It has been tough, but I think that, that the British Waterways plus the NFA have each in their own way started to lead um, angling into the direction of benefiting from the canal system. Well, that's true, and when you consider we've got something like 2,000 miles of canals it's incredible, isn't it? lying around, you know, <laughs> let's, let's have anglers there and yep, let's have it right. probably organised for the sport. It's, it's got to be good. And as you say, a lot of a lot has been achieved over the last couple of years. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that, and you must be too. I see you've got the, the board yeah. in your hand there uh, on the overhead power lines. We've had a lot of talk about well, that. What do you think we? of that yeah. one, then, Tom? But this is exactly what we want on our fisheries, you know, where we have the problem, we want these sort of notice boards exhibited. That's exactly what we want. We've worked together with you on that. That's right. So, so ideal mm. for us now. I think it's a job the where it's showing that uh, we can work together. We took a, si mm. a, a serious problem, because it's obviously not just the canal system that's affected, mm. but the canal system has probably the biggest problem, Tom. And uh, your endorsement of what we've done here shows that, that we can achieve and work together to make better, safer fisheries. Oh, absolutely. And I think we've got that nicely wrapped up now. Yes, I think so. Uh, we've got the nylon litter control. Yes, uh, yes. That's working cold, very well, which isn't you, it? which you've used. And the, the code of conduct. Code of practice. Code of, code of practice, which you've, you, you've, you've seen and had a lot to say to. So, mm. all in all, we're doing quite well. I think so. I think what we're getting is, is what I appreciate, is, is we're getting a, a greater degree of a of uh, friendship, if I can put it that way, of the people that use the canal system. And a greater understanding, particularly when we publish codes, and we don't just send them out to my anglers or your waterway users, but they're available to everybody. Well, and I, th I think that if we can utilize the canal system uh, far greater, I mean, it's a great fishery, Tom. Oh, indeed, I mean, yeah. For instance, we've got Dicky Carr fishing over there, and the, the bag of fish he's got what, today. What more can you say? I, I, I couldn't add any more to that thing. I'd add one thing, really? Tom. In the middle of London, a bag of fish like that? Can't be bad. Can't pretty be bad. impressive. Yeah, indeed. Yeah.